Good morning, y'all. Uh, so this morning, I'm going to teach you guys, or I'm going to attempt to teach you guys, um, how easy it is to use Parallels with ProRip or really any other RIP software. So I have a Mac. I've had a Mac for years. Uh, the, the MacBook that I'm using, I bought in early 2015. I have had zero problems. I've never had a virus, nothing. Uh, so I love it. Uh, Photoshop and Illustrator work like a dream, but what does not work like a dream is ProRip or any other RIP software. It just doesn't work with the Mac. So you have to come up with some other solution. I know some people use Boot Camp. I tried that, but I just I, I couldn't work, make it work for me. So then I downloaded the free version of Parallels, and I felt like that would be a solution. So I did end up, just so you know, I did end up buying the basic version, which I think was probably maybe $79. And then, as most of you know, a Mac has very limited amounts of USB ports. So I also bought an external USB port hub that I plug into one of my uh, ports. And so that really is the key, that USB drive. So what I've decided is that specific USB drive is only for my Unicolor 550. So my, I've got my SmartCut and my ProRip software in, in those dongles, or I've got the dongles in the USB drive that I purchased for external. And I think that was like $20. So all in, I'm about a hundred bucks in. So download, go ahead and purchase Parallels, download it. And what'll happen is you'll see up here on the screen you've got this little toolbox and this automatically happens so if you click the toolbox it kind of tells you some of the things that you can do I will admit to you that I have never once used any tool in this toolbox the only thing I use parallels for is for ProRip so what's going to happen is when you insert after you install ProRip when you insert your USB dongle it's going to come up with this screen right here and it basically says hey where do you want to connect this USB device do you want it to be on a Mac or do you want it to be on your Windows so here you would choose Windows and then remember my choice now I'm using two monitors so I can't actually show you how that works but it's literally click remember my choice and you're done so now let's go ahead and open um, Windows so if you'll see you've got this little um, I guess it looks like a pause button to me so you can click it there and I've, here comes Windows and it is up and it looks just like Windows you've got all your little things over here now what I do think is pretty cool about this because I don't ever make it as big as my whole screen I can have Photoshop running in the background and I can go back and forth if I don't like you know something that I've done because I haven't expanded my window all the way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got a design that I'm going to use for the Halloween contest, and I really need to get that uploaded today. So I'm just going to click on ProRip. Whoops, I think I am. Here it is. Okay, and it looks, I'm assuming it looks just like it would for those of you on a PC. So I'm just going to take you through a quick rip that uh, I'm going to do. I just discovered the variable rasterizing, so I love that. So that's what I'm going to use on this skull. So let me just go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to choose this Jacob lantern And I modified my blacks a little bit in Photoshop, which is why I've got a ton of them. So it's loading. It takes a second. So here it is. I'm just going to click on it. And I'm going to come down here, and you'll see it's gigantic. So I'm just going to come down here. I'm using A4 A foils, so I'm going to make it 8.27. I have already sized it in Photoshop. So here's my image here. And this is actually my son wearing this Halloween mask. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to Jobs, right up here. And whoops, I'm, I've got to click on it. So I'm going to go to Jobs, 
And if you see that nothing's happening, it's because this is not highlighted. So just click it. Now jobs. And I'm going to go down here to production plugins. Knock me black out. So this is the standard setting right here. I don't, you know, I think I want a little more of this to show up. So I'm going to adjust my midtones just a little bit. And you'll see that it's getting darker down here in this area. And I was noticing that I was getting just a little too much gray. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and just reduce those midtones. And so if we put the shirt color in here, now you can see, let's try and make this a little bit bigger. So if you look here, now you can see more of this hooded section. So I'm going to click OK. And like I said, all I did was move these midtones. Now you can work on this as well. Let's get rid of that shirt color and go to transparent. And you can see how that works. Um, but I'm going to leave that the way it was. Put the shirt color back on. So I like that. And I'm going to go with OK. OK, so now what I want to do after it gets done rendering that for me is I'm going to do some rasterizing. So here's my image with the black knocked out. Uh, I've got, got it set in the job tab to Uninet standard 550. Now I always print a test sheet. So I'll go over here to my page and I'm going to change this on the eye color. You know, you use the tray one for the A, A media. So I'm going to choose my bypass tray here because I'm just going to use regular paper and see how that works. Uh, I use black paper, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just choose color and go forward. Now, if I wanted to print it to where I could see the image perfectly, I would change my cue and I would do it as white as an overprint in instead of an underprint. I'm sorry, I would do it as an underprint instead of an overprint. But here I'm just checking to see what it looks like. So, okay, so now I'm going to go over here to job because I've got this all set. And oh, because it's eight and a half by 11, let me just go ahead and change that. And then I'll go back over here to job and I'm going to just center that on this design right here on the page by clicking the center on the page button. And it's too long obviously. So what I'll do there is I'll just let me make that a little bit smaller and smaller still. And I'm just going to pull this up until it's on the same, on, on, fully on the page and then center. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to go ahead and open this color adjust button. And I'm going to change my whites to 185. And I'm going to change my dot size. So I'm going to use variable rasterizing here. So I'm going to try 210 and see what that gives me. And I always leave my whole size now at 0.7. But when I first started, I just could not get the marrying process down. And so I backed that, uh, made that bigger at 0.65. So to the left, the holes are bigger. See? even though it looks like they would be smaller. And to the right, they're smaller. So I'm going to just use 0.7. And I'm also going to increase my saturation because I this picture needs it. It's really colorful. So I'm going to go over here to and make this a 6. And I'm going to click OK. I'm leaving my choke to 3. I'm just going to click OK there. And now I'll go up here and there's two ways you can get to, you know, setting the shape of the rasterization. So you can either go up here to jobs, properties, and then this, com this panel comes up, or I like to do this better. I just double click on the image and then, and then the same screen pops up. So I'm going to go over here to color layer, ink removal, and I'm going to do 28. And this is a landscape, so I'm going to try 67. I've, I've not done a 67 angle yet, so I'm going to try it and see how it works. It may not 
look good at all, which is another reason why I'm going to print it on a piece of paper first. So I'm going to go to 67, and then I'm going to, tr whoops, try that again, 67. And then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to try this variable dots, and we'll see how that does. Now, I may want to do this again, so I'm going to click Create Print Mode, and I have way too many, so I need to delete some, but I'm going to go to click Create Print Mode, and change it to Variable, and just hit Save. And now I'll hit OK, and we're done there. <clears throat> so now, if you wanted to see it before you printed it on paper, uh, I'll show you. I'll, I'm going to use Nick, Mickey's tip that he showed us the other day. So I'm just going to click here. I'm going to right click. So I left clicked on the document, and I click, and then I right clicked, and I'm going to go to Rip Only, and wait for it to do its thing. And now that it says job spooled, I'm going to right click and view raw data. <clears throat> and so here is what it would look like with the variable rasterization. And notice, so 22 is not, 67 is not going to work here. I can tell already. But if you notice these lines, you've got a combination of lines inverted dots, you've got some triangles, some X's. Let's make that a little bit bigger. See, it's really very cool what you can do, and, and I, it tells you what the best mode is. So that's why I think this will be uh, interesting. So I'm going to do that. Now, another cool thing you can do is you can save this, and then you can bring it back into Photoshop and put it on a mock-up, I think. I'm going to test that a little bit later, but for now I'm going to, oh my, I don't want 96 megabytes. Let me do 300 and hit OK. And then I can go back in here later. And see if I can put that on a mock-up. So again, whoops, let's go to my, Let's save it there. Let's see if I can save it. Okay, there it is. So basically, that's what this video is about. So I did this on parallels, and it was a snap. Let's go back over here. And then, well, I tell you what. So then I'll just go ahead and let you know. So now I can just hit print. And now it's going to print out the sample so I can make sure it works. And that's all you have to do. Thanks so much. I hope this helped.